So this first session that's ending now uh, is actually about um, internships and portfolio requirements. So um, who here has not done the internship and wants information about internships? Okay. What kinds of things are running through your mind about internships? Help me out. How do I get one? How do you get one? Okay, what else? Where do you look? Okay, what else? Okay, process. Let's start with process, and I will come back with how do we look and where do we go, okay? First of all, our internships happen uh, for everyone at 90 credit hours, right? So everybody is required to do an internship. They are three credits you're required to do. They are 150 hours. You must be registered for COM 483 when you do your internship. So in other words, if you get a great job this summer and you're like, yeah, this would be a great internship, and you come to me in the fall and you say, I did this job over the summer, can I get my internship credit for it? The answer is no, right? Because you have to be registered for COM 483 at that time. In order to be registered for COM 483, it is the permission of the instructor to allow you to register for that class. In order to be able to register for it, you have to have an internship lined up and you have to have paperwork filled out, right, that both uh, your advisor and whoever is happening to supervise the internship course that semester um, will need to approve. Then during the registration, they will give you permission to register for the class and you register for COM 43 and then you go about uh, taking care of that. Okay? It happens at 90 credits. You cannot register for your internship uh, credit until you are at 90 credits. All right? So usually that is sometime after the end of your junior year going into your senior year. All right? The reason for that is we want you to have a very meaningful internship experience. We don't want you having not done any of our courses and kind of going into an internship experience and having them say, okay, great, you can fetch coffee and make copies for me, right? We actually want you doing stuff as part of that internship. So when you get an internship, you will come over here to the Western Carolina University um, website. Uh, we want you to go to academics. Arts and Sciences, Social Science, because we're all about being social, right? Awesome. Communication. So when you come to the Comm Department homepage, this is where everything is that you will need in order to get your internship. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you will see here at the bottom, internship ch checklist, internship requirements, internship forms, right? This is where you get your internship form. If you click on this, there's a variety of things here. Um, there's an introduction le letter, right? So if you're trying to approach somebody about doing an internship, this is a sample letter that will help you. If you want to send an email, if you want to send a letter to approach somebody, this is something that can you, you can kind of adapt to your situation to go about helping you request an internship. Um, this is the employer's internship job description. This is the really important one, right? So this is a PDF that the employer will fill out, right? So they'll go do this. What's real important is that we know where it is and who your direct supervisor is, okay? This form can also help you have the conversation with the employer about the particulars of the internship so you know exactly what you're getting into, right? So if you look on here, Company name, a direct supervisor, who is the person that's going to be reporting to you, or you're going to be reporting to, right? That's important. We need that, that person and their contact information so that we can actually be communicating with them. Sometimes, it's a bigger company, they also might have human resources process paperwork for you. Um, anybody that's done an internship in a, in a hospital environment, I've, I've had some folks do um, uh, internships in PR and marketing departments for hospitals. It all goes through HR, because you know what else they have to do? They have to get vaccinated for a whole lot of diseases, 
They have to have flu shots and make sure all of their childhood vaccinations are up to date, even if they're working in marketing in a hospital, right? So there are some things that kind of happen. So this is to kind of, who is your direct supervisor in larger companies? There's an HR person. If there's not, it's not a big deal, right? Um, the required qualifications for the majors, again, this helps the, the employer helps you have the discussion with them. Is there something that you need? Personally, I don't necessarily care, right, about what their requirements are. If they want to include that, that is fine. This is the other really important section. What are your responsibilities? What are the things you're going to be doing while you're there, right? Also, you will notice there's a number of hours each week. Again, this helps you have the conversation to make sure you're getting in the hours that you have to take. You have to do 150 hours worth of work. If you think about it, over the course of a regular semester that's 16 weeks long, you're looking at about 10 hours a week. In the summertime, it's probably a little more because the regular summer session is only about nine weeks. I'll talk a little bit more about summer since that's what we're coming up here in a minute, right? If you want to do more, hours, that's fine, right? If it's going to be a full-time job and you want to work 40 hours a week for 16 weeks, that is completely fine and, and up to you between you and the employer. Um, the kinds of things that you're going to be doing, this gives you a, a, so some folks will do social media, they will do guest relations, they will do um, uh, press releases and media relations, and, that, and so what kind of percentage of the internship? Again, this is to help you have a conversation with your employer to make sure that you are doing things that are beneficial and that we are looking for in the department. So this is the really important section to get filled out. Um, <clears throat> this question here becomes real important, right? We have added this to our internship form, this idea that are there things you're going to be doing as part of this internship that you can put as part of your professional portfolio? So in our professional development classes, anybody in COM 296? A couple of you. Anybody not have taken 296 yet? Okay. In 296, that's where we start you on this. You will start building a personal website. On that personal website, you will have a portfolio of your work. We want you to be producing things that you can show out there to potential employers when you're done with your degree that says, here's the stuff I've done. And so this, section here becomes real important. It helps you have the conversation. What are the things you're going to be doing and are there things that will actually actually be usable for a portfolio? Okay, so that's that's to have that conversation. Again, will the student participate in formal training? I don't necessarily care, but again, helps you have the conversation to make sure you understand and the employer understands exactly what you're doing. Um, if there is training, great. If not, it's not a big deal. Um, Will the student be receiving compensation? Again, I don't necessarily care if you're getting paid for your internship, but this helps you have the conversation. More and more employers out there are recognizing that it's just morally just to pay someone to do work for them, right? So most of my students these days are getting internships that are compensated. Right, so this actually gives you that kind of idea that helps you have that conversation. Does it have to be compensated? No. Right, under federal labor laws, if you are receiving college credit, which you are for this, they do not necessarily have to pay you. So be aware of that. Again, it's just morally just and correct for them to do that. And more and more internships are paid these days. Um, start date, signatures, etc. Right, so you will get this form filled out from your employer and you will get it to your advisor and you will get it to the internship supervisor for the COM 483 course. During the fall semester, I'm the supervisor for the COM 43 course. So if you're planning on doing your internship in the fall, your advisor and myself have to approve this. If you are doing your internship over the summer, I do not supervise internships in the summer. The rest of the faculty does. Um, this summer we have Professor Walsh, uh, Dr. Farmer, uh, Ms. Connolly, and uh, Kata are all doing internship supervisors. It is up to you. Whoever you would like to have 
process and, and the paperwork and be contacting you throughout the summer, that's the person you can go with. Um, and again, they will make sure if they're not your advisor, that your advisor also knows what's kind of going on with them. Questions about this process so far? Um, so let's go back over here and kind of take a look. Okay. So all of this information is out there, right? When you do the internship, you, there are a couple responsibilities that you have. We, I get this question all the time. There is no meeting for the COM 43 class. There is no classroom work. There is nothing like that at all. You are out working for somebody else. However, they must do, and you are required to turn in both a midterm evaluation and a final evaluation. So long about halfway through your internship, the employer should be helping um, get this filled out for you during their evaluation of you. This is a standard form, so what you can be, you can supply the form to them, they will fill that out, and we can get that in. They can, we expect them to share that information with you, to go through an evaluation with you, um, so you can send it into your advisor. Your supervisor, uh, whoever's supervising your internship, can send it in to us. Doesn't matter, but that needs to be uh, um, gotten in here. Um, the other one is a final evaluation. Slightly different form, but it is also there as well. <coughs> and you will have them do a final evaluation throughout the semester, on the semester, right? Um, the only other things that you need to do is while you are completing your internship, you need to complete kind of a log of your hours, so you're keeping track of how many hours you're working, and the activities that you're kind of doing. It doesn't have to be super a, a special format. Folks can do it in Excel. I've had folks do it in Word documents. You will turn that in at the end of the internship, right. a log of your hours and activities. What we want you to use that for is to write a final reflection paper. So the other thing you will turn at the end is a final reflection paper. Um, when I supervise these, I give everybody kind of a, a, a list of questions to kind of guide how they will write their, their final reflection paper. But it is essentially, what was the experience for you? Did it help you? Did it not help you? Did it help you decide on a career path? What did you enjoy about it? What did you not enjoy about it? Uh, did you say, forget it, I'm never going to do that stuff, so that's what I learned from it. That's all fine, right? This is a, it's, it's part of the learning process and the learning experience, right? So that is what your final reflection paper is. You do not get a letter grade for your internship. It is SQ. So if we get in the, evalu the midterm, the final evaluation, your log of hours, your final reflection paper, you, you have satisfactory satisfactorily completed, and you will get an S for the grade for your internship. Questions about any of that so far? I can't tell the expressions with the mask. And you're like, this dude is nuts. I'm trying to learn to read eyes better. Um, that is the process of how you kind of go about doing that. Some of the common questions I get. I'm going to do my internship in the summer, and I can start in May, but the summer semester doesn't start till June 1st. Can, I be, can my hours before June 1st count? The answer is, the majority of your hours need to be while you were registered for COM 43. In the summertime, it's a little bit easier. You start in May, that's fine. You work for a couple weeks in May. You continue on through June and July and finish up the beginning of August, um, and you get your hours in that way, that is fine. During the fall and the spring, I have gotten this question. I want to do all my hours. I'm going to take it next spring semester, and I want to do all my hours in December up until we start classes in January and be completely done with my internship by the time I start spring classes in January. The answer is no, can't do that. Okay. This is because our friends at the other end of the state, UNC Chapel Hill, came under a little bit of problem a few years ago. And they ruined it all. And for all of us, they actually gave fake classes to athletes. Imagine that. So we cannot, if you were doing work for a class and you're not interested for a class, it looks super suspicious. 
can't happen, right? So that's kind of part of why we do that. Questions about any of that? Yeah. So if you take it over the summer, like the classes that, um, my mom was wondering, do classes are there six weeks for the summer, or is it just the entire summer? Um, you would, I mean, you would register most likely for the entire summer. I mean, the full summer session is a nine-week session, so you would register for that. Again, I don't care when you are or are not doing your internship or where your hours are falling with, with those folks. Um, but it's completely between you and the employer. I, it, you just need to be done by the beginning of August when we have to turn all the grades in and things like that. Okay. What else about it? Okay. Let's talk a little bit about how you find an internship. Um, I will not find you an internship. That is your job. However, we will help you as best we can. All right. There are some things I think you need to consider. Right. Part of this is location. Where can you do your internship? If you have, I, I have a student right now that wants to do their internship in Denver. And the reason they want to do it in Denver is they want to end up in Denver. Fantastic. They have friends or relatives or somebody out there they can live with and go do their internship. Fantastic. Right? You can go ahead and do that. Um, if there is some uh, a summer abroad program where you will be doing work and working in Europe and there's housing provided, fantastic. Have at it. If you're going to go home to Charlotte or Raleigh or any of those places, perfectly fine. Right? You need to kind of figure out where it is that you want to do your internship, where you think you can do your internship, and begin your search there. The next thing we need to look for is typically I get the question of, um, well, I went and I looked for internships on Indeed.com. Right? Indeed has 300 bazillion jobs postings out there. One of the things about internships is they are often not posted. More and more are being posted, but often they are not posted. It tends to get very frustrating to wade, wade through zillions and zillions of job postings looking for an internship for communication. One of the problems is communication, we all know what we do. The outside world refers to communication as pretty much everything. So everything, everybody wants somebody with good communication skills, right? So every job posting out there, you're going to put in communication as a search term, it's going to come up every flipping job out there. Right? Doesn't help you when you're trying to narrow that down. You can look for internships, you can do it that way. If we want to look at job boards, one of the things that we can do here from the Com Department homepage, right? If you look over here, this box over here that says discover more and learn more, click on that. Um, this takes you to our affiliated website that we in the department maintain over and above what the university maintains. We have all kinds of different information out here. If you look over up here on top, there are student resources. If you click on student resources, uh, <coughs> all kinds of fun things. Scholarships, we've got an interest in scholarships. We have scholarship information out here. There are job boards that we put out here. These job boards, we have actually gone out and kind of curated for you. These are job boards that are focused in the world of public relations, communications, advertising, marketing, broadcasting, media, <laughs> social media, et cetera, et cetera. All right? This will at least kind of give you a start on some of these. So you can kind of look through any of these. If you'll notice, there are job boards for some of the, the various um, professional societies out there. So, um, <clears throat> the PRSA, Job Center, for instance, right? The Public Relations Society of America is out there. Um, that, is, that is an option. So there's job boards out there. Here's the other thing. If you hover over the student resources and you click on this career opportunities, these are specific jobs and internships that we know about, have been told about, and we are posting out here. I get communication related uh, internships and job postings every single week somebody will email me something right we get them out here the minute I get them they go to the social media folks for the department 
and they get them posted out here. So if we look at some of these, um, there's a lot, of, a lot of different internships out here. One of the things that you will notice, right, um, some of these um, summer internships um, are current postings. Some of them are, are postings that have passed. That's okay, right? This gives you a clue as to some place that has had interns before, and it would make sense for you to go ahead and approach them and say, hey, I know you don't necessarily have an internship posting at the moment, but I'm really interested in your organization. I would love to do work for you. I see you've done internships in the past. Could it, is it possible that we could do an internship XYZ semester? All right. One of the ways that will help you kind of get there when you're looking for different kinds of internships. Um, so most of these tend to be relatively local. Um, so it just kind of depends. Um, some of them are larger. Um, the Career Center here on campus tends that we work with them a lot. If you're in our professional development classes, we bring them in to come talk to classes and help out with things like resume writing and whatnot. So they're pretty in tune with what we are, are doing. I get job postings from them all the time. Right? So that's a resource here on campus too. They're very in tune with what it is that we are looking for for our students, and they can kind of help you come up with some ideas as well. Um, by the way, there is the, have you heard about this, the Career Center, or the Career Fair is happening, and I forget the dates offhand. Um, I think it's after spring break. March 17th. Yeah. Warner Media and CNN are going to be there, which is pretty exciting for comm majors because a lot of times comm majors go to those job fairs and they're like, there's nobody recruiting for communication people. Well, guess what? Warner Media and CNN are going to be there at this one. It's also a great opportunity to go and talk to those folks there because they're standing there to talk to students, to talk to them about potential internships. Right? One of the things that we can thank COVID for is our ability to work remotely all by ourselves in our bedrooms. Right? Some internships are remote. That's fine. Don't have a problem with you guys working remotely as well um, if those kinds of things come up. Um, <clears throat> so there's these kinds of places to find an internship. Um, outside of all this, it's time then to do a little problem solving. So if you know the area that you want to look in, what are the kinds of places I can begin to target to see if they would have potential job internships? For my PR and health comp folks, I will tell you I am a big proponent of going to work for an agency, PR agency, advertising agency, etc. Why? They are focused on the world of communication and the work that we do, and they very much tend to take internships. Right? Um, it gives you a lot of great experience. You're immersed in the industry. It gives you a lot of networking and professional contacts right away during your internship so that when you're graduating, you can find a job. You will tend to be working on projects that you can build portfolio pieces from, and it becomes a launch point for you for your career. Right? Um, there are other places. If you're really interested in a particular area or industry or idea, come talk to us. Talk to the faculty. Talk to your advisors. I tell these stories all the time. I know people. I used to work in the advertising public relations for agencies. And it's kind of amazing the people that I have out there. Um, I had a student a couple years ago um, tell me she was really interested in working in scripted television one day. right? Broadcasting student, Helen Bowen. Did anybody know her? You all hear that? No folks, maybe? No? Okay. Helen um, came to me and said, uh, I'm really interested in kind of working in scripted television. And I said, that's interesting. I know somebody. A friend of mine actually has worked on a couple little shows out there in Hollywood, Grey's Anatomy. Anybody ever heard of it? How to Get Away with Murder, Desperate Housewives. All right. <clears throat> I have a friend that's worked on it. I, and I have no shame, y'all. I have no problem advocating for you all as students. I will send them notes. I will reach out to them and say, hey, i got a student. Will you talk to them? Will it guarantee you a job? No, but it gives you a contact out there in the business that you can start talking to and ask questions about. Right? How do I do this? How do I get in? Where do I start? What kinds of places do I look for? Um, I had another student. 
my dream job someday. I want to be a National Geographic photographer and, and travel the world. I know somebody, right, who actually does exactly that. My name's Amy Saka. Amy and I worked together at an agency in Detroit. She was a copywriter on account, an account that I worked on at the time. She is today getting all of her, her work published in National Geographic magazine and websites. She's gotten grants from the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, she's based out of Detroit, Michigan. Uh, she, and she does all kinds of um, photo essays and photo, photo work, right? Amazing. How did she start that? How did she get into that? What's that life like? I have no problems sending folks her way to say, hey, talk to them about it. Um, again, I can't guarantee you an internship, but I can give you the starting point. I can't guarantee you a job, but I can give you the starting point, right? So these are the kinds of things to begin to think about. Uh, the other thing is we are bringing alumni in as much as we possibly can to talk to you folks. I had a, we had a couple folks in yesterday to talk to COM 296 and COM 496, right? A couple students that graduated a couple years ago. Based out of Charlotte, Jordan Justice works in social media and digital marketing as a media buyer and planner, um, <clears throat> as well as Mary Mizuko, PR major. <clears throat> Love Mary. She's the first one to tell you that she was not a great student. Took her five years. She got arrested while she was here. I'm not talking out of turn. She told the class that yesterday, <clears throat> right? Had some bumps along the road in terms of finding a job and finding her place. Today, she has a six-figure photography business, right? She does wedding photography, and she does wedding photography all over the world. She does elopements. So she has gone with people out to the Arizona desert. She's going to Scotland. She's going to the Dominican Republic this year quite frequently bringing folks out here to the mountains to take pictures for engagement photos and wedding photos. Right? She's got 40 weddings booked next year. She averages about $4,500 to $5,000 per wedding. You do the math. Right? Do it all right. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, she also knows how to set up a, a limited liability corporation. She knows how to get insurance, and she knows how to do it the right way. And she takes on mentees would love to work with folks. So again, we know folks. We can kind of hook you up with folks. Um, LinkedIn. Make sure you are updating your LinkedIn profile and start going out there and making contacts. Western Carolina University is your in, right? Find alumni. Find companies in your region and the city with, that you'd like to target doing the kinds of things that you'd like to do. Um, and find out if Western Carolina alumni work there. People love to help students, y'all. Love, love, love to help students. Right? No problems with saying, hey, my, I'm a student. Um, I'm interested. I, I want to talk to you. Um, nine times out of ten, they will have no problem getting back to you. They will try to help you as best they can. Right? So there's some of those kinds of things. There's also some non-traditional ways to get your internships in. Um, for example, the city of Asheville takes on interns, and they pay. They have many offices for public relations and public information out of the city that do it for the police department, the fire department, the city, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? If you're interested in that kind of work, it's going to take you a little bit to set it up, but we can help you start to find the contacts there. Um, there is a business incubator uh, organization in Asheville called The Collider. They are all about bringing together folks involved in the world of climate change so let's say somebody has a great technology idea, and they want to patent a piece of software that measures rainfall on the top of Kilimanjaro or something. I don't know. I know it's not my world. Right? And they need someone that has the business savvy and the contacts to, to, to work with producers of this software to get it distributed. Right? The Collider is the spot where they can come and kind of find each other right? and begin to work together. The Collider has internships for communication people because their whole job is communication. Their whole job is to build relationships with people. Their whole job is to make sure that they're reaching out to the community. Right? So that is another way to do it. So come talk to us. We can help you brainstorm those ideas. Um, but you'll have to do some, some, some of that looking kind of there. Right there. Um, questions about any of that? I say this speech all the time over and over and over again. <laughs> so, if I'm leaving something out, I'm going to know. Um, 
If your advisors can help you, I can help you, come talk to me about those kinds of things. Um, what up? I'm like already into my next world of general advising, so. Um, any other questions? Portfolio materials. I'm going to briefly touch on that since y'all are here. Portfolio materials. In COM 296, you have to produce port, uh, a portfolio. You will build a website using WordPress. In COM 496, you will continue doing that, and you will continue to add to your portfolio. I will tell you, it's a pain in the ass. I hear this from students all the time. Nobody likes doing it. But the fact of the matter is you absolutely need it. And my friends in broadcasting here, you also need reels, right? What's a reel, you might ask? Sure. A reel. We don't use it. used to be kind of on reel to reel tape because it's about 100 years old. But it actually is a video, a production of the work you've done that shows the video pr uh, production that you have done, the editing, the shooting, etc. You need to have a reel that shows you kind of a variety of things. I am not the best one to advise on reels these days, but that guy behind us in the corner is a great one to help you figure out how to, how to do a reel. And what is it you need to be kind of doing? But your audio work, your video work, et cetera, et cetera. Right? You have to do those kinds of things. So as you're out there looking for this, make sure that you are saving and working on things from class and your internships and any other jobs out there that you can contribute to your portfolio. Um, I have a list. I will put. <laughs> I was going to make copies today in the copy machine. That's also my technology problem this morning. Um, we have, in some of our classes, identified potential assignments that the professors have you do that could be portfolio pieces, right? So, for example, if you're taking COM 255, um, uh, <clears throat> there's the final project of that class. You might have to continue on and kind of refine things at the end of the class on your own time, right? Be aware of that. Just because you finish it for the class, at 4 o'clock in the morning when it was due at you know, 8 a.m., right? Might not be the best work, and you might have gotten a B minus on it, but you want to turn it into A plus work once the class is out. So be aware of those kinds of things. Um, but desktop publishing, PR writing, um, crisis com, campaigns, radio production classes, TV production classes, the documentary classes, all of this kind of work. There are assignments in those classes that we have identified. And if you are unsure, talk to the professor in that class. They can help you. They can help identify that kind of stuff. 